Mushoe Hua. And sure enough, it has come to pass. The same old pattern has been repeated as expected. Spencer Sankale, the whistleblower of the Mara Heist saga at the Masai Mara University, has finally been sacked. Here is a script that we have perfected over the years. Frustrate the whistleblower, then suddenly either transfer them or purport to give them a promotion, and then finally sack them or force them out. Same script, different cast. Just like Bernard Mushere, the man this country owes its gratitude for outing the five billion shilling scandal at Afi House faced this very same fate. With just a few years to his retirement, he was transferred from the Ministry of Health before he could give his final report on the saga, after which he was sent into early retirement. There's the 11 employees at the Grand Regency Hotel who gave information to the then Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission on alleged corruption at the hotel, who were fired, but later reinstated by the receiver manager, only to be physically thrown out and locked up at the central police station for some time. Let's not forget the great late David Munyanke, that now deceased whistleblower of the Golden Bug scandal, arrested, released, and then fired from his job at the Central Bank of Kenya. He would later die a poor man in 2006. There's another lesser known whistleblower, Elias Kavanda, who uncovered several corruption scandals at the Kenya Railways Corporation in 2003. He was demoted and sent to a smaller station after he, which he was sacked and thrown out of the government house he and his family occupied. Do you see the pattern? Whistleblowing is a thankless job. No thanks in part to the government agencies, because honestly, if the government was serious about protecting Sankale, why was he left to work at the Masai Mara University two years since he first unearthed the damning scandal? As a key state witness, shouldn't he have been relocated, given another job awaiting the outcome of the trial? Why continue to subject him and the other 20, as per the university's statement, to what I would only imagine to be an extremely hostile environment? What is not in doubt is that there is a very heavy personal price to be paid by these whistleblowers. Bernard Mushere remains a pariah in many circles. He says his children are affected too. The others I have mentioned here, and many more who have gone unnamed, have had to either leave their home country, lose their livelihoods, or even their very lives. And what of the investigating arms? They're not helping. Instead, they aggravate the situation through their ineffective investigations and prosecutions. If the matter is efficiently and effectively dealt with to bring it to rest, it would no doubt stabilize the whistleblowers' lives. For instance, why has it taken so long to fully investigate the Afi House scandal? What are they still looking for five years later? For as long as the cases remain unresolved, they continue to hang on the heads of those who blew the whistle. The tribulations of the whistleblowers will greatly help to, sadly, gag the whistleblowers and keep off any potential whistleblowers. And in this way, corruption wins again. As I've heard from both Spencer Sankale and Bernard Mushere, they say they fear no man, only God. As they should, because it seems only God has their backs. So much for our zero tolerance to corruption. That's my take tonight.